for that element a now we consider any element which we are calling by b which is not present in the subgroup which is generated by a then according to lagrange's theorem right and by our assumption that g does not have any element of order 2p right so either the order of this element b should be 2 or p right if uh, so what is the case here so we consider one subgroup which is generated by a we consider one subgroup which is generated by b and we take their intersection uh, so we are looking for the order of this intersection so Uh, by the uh, result this one if you have two subgroups and you multiply them and you are now considering the order of their multiplication h k so we have the order of the uh, subgroup h multiplied with the order of the subgroup k divided by the order of their intersection so now we are looking for this thing so what would it be it would obviously divide the order of h and it would obviously divide the order of k right so that is why this intersection would divide the order of the subgroup which is generated by a and you know because a has order uh, the element a has order p so therefore the group which is generated by a would also have the order p right so that means this divides p right so any uh, what all numbers divide p p is some prime number so therefore and moreover they are not equal to each other if they would be equal then we then we would say their intersection would also have the order p but p uh, the in, this intersection cannot have the order p why because they are different to each other hence this this has to be this order has to be equal to 1 now if the intersection has order 1 then if uh, b has order p right so uh, we are saying because we know the order of the subgroup which is generated by a it has order p now if the subgroup which is generated by b also has the order p then their multiplication right this thing would give you the order of a multiplied by the order of b which is p into p which is p square right however because this intersection came out to be 1 and we are using this result here but this here this thing gives us p square but p square is obviously greater than 2p and 2p was the order of our initial group and a and b the subgroup which is generated by a and the subgroup which is generated by b they both are the members of this group g right so therefore this thing is not possible that p square uh, sh should be appearing here which is greater than 2p so therefore we cannot have the order of the subgroup which is generated by p as equal to p right so therefore the order of b should uh, should be 2 so that means any element of the kind which uh, in g which is not present in the subgroup which is generated by a now remember that the order of this one is p so the any element which is not there in this uh, subgroup generated by a would definitely have order 2 right so let's consider one such element let's consider the element ab now this element ab is obviously not uh, there in the subgroup which is generated by a so our argument above it shows that uh, its order should be equal to 2 if its order is equal to 2 so that means if we take ab raised to power 2 it would give us identity right so that means from here we should have ab is equal to ab inverse right so ab is equal to ab inverse and we can use the properties of inverse to have b inverse a inverse and because b was having order 2 right the order of b was 2 so therefore b square is equal to identity and from here we can multiply by b inverse on both sides so that we have here b is equal to b inverse correct so therefore the value of b inverse is b and a inverse is as such why because a raised to power p is identity and not a raised to power a square is not equal to identity this is not there so therefore we have the value of ab as equal to b a inverse correct so the value of ab is equal to b a inverse now using this expression we are saying that uh, this expression it determines the multiplication table or the calculate table for whole of the group g why because 
you can uh, use this expression to evaluate each of the composition let's suppose take this element a cube b a raised to power 4 then according to associativity you can write it as a square into a into b into a power 4 then using associativity you can have this now the value of a b is b a inverse so you can substitute the value of a b as b a inverse and then you can have the value a square as such b as such a inverse as such now from a raised to power 4 you can extract 1a so you are left with this this becomes the identity e right so you have a right you have a square b into a cube now you can write this a square as a into a b into a cube again you can use the value of a b as b a inverse right so a b is b a inverse so again you can simplify it like this a b a inverse in place of a cube you can write a into a square now this thing become identity so therefore you have a b into a square here this thing again you can use the value of a b as b a b a inverse again you can simplify this as a you can write a square as a into a so this expression becomes identity so you are left with b a so so this multiplication table for all non cyclic groups which are having order 2p right that is uniquely determined by this relation a b is equal to b a inverse so therefore for all not all non cyclic groups which are having order 2p they should be isomorphic to each other why because we can have multiplication table for them according to this relation and if they are isomorphic to each other they are also isomorphic to dp which is having order as 2p right so this is what we wanted to prove that g is isomorphic to the group uh, dihedral group uh, dp which is having order 2p right okay and one more thing we have a corollary to this result for non-abelian groups for example s3 which is a symmetric group of order 3 and this general linear group uh, which is having order 2 which consists of all 2 cross 2 matrices where the entries are taken from z2 what is z2 it contains just two elements 0 and 1 right such that when you cons uh, when you construct the matrix suppose 0 1 and then 1 and 0 so it should have non-zero determinant so this matrix would be member of this g l 2 comma z 2 you can have more such elements so this group and this group both of them they are isomorphic to this dihedral group d3 which is having order 6 so that means the number of elements present here would also be 6 and here you know that is 6 so i hope you understood the proof of this theorem uh, well, well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.